This is a how-to episode on securing alimony or spousal maintenance awards in a Colorado divorce. Now, let's assume that we have our hypothetical divorce clients, Eric and Melanie Wolf, and either by agreement or by court order, Eric is going to be paying Melanie $5,000 per month for 10 years. Now, if we go into the rationale behind that award, we're going to get into the lifestyle, the duration of the marriage, and all of the factors that I've discussed in previous episodes on what goes into the maintenance award in the first place. But really what we are highlighting is that Melanie is going to continue to be financially reliant in some form on Eric. And that raises the issue of what happens if Eric dies the day after the award or a year after the award. And indeed, the law takes into consideration or allows the court and often by agreement of the parties to secure that maintenance award, that future, those future maintenance payments in the form of life insurance. Now, there are other forms of security, such as real estate liens. So securing that future payment against real estate that Eric owns, there could be a trust that is set up. There could be bank guarantees or lines of credit, investment accounts. There's a variety of different ways that uh, Melanie can protect herself and the parties can reach an agreement or the court can take into consideration uh, the future uh, payments and making sure that those future payments are made. But really what we're going to focus in this episode is life insurance because it is the most common. It's often the least expensive form of securing that future payment. Now, under the law, 1410.114, the court's going to take into con different considerations when determining the amount or the terms of the life insurance that secures Eric's, Mel Eric's payments to Melanie. The court's going to consider the age and insurability of Eric, the cost of the life insurance, the amount and term of the maintenance, whether the parties carried life insurance during the marriage. So if Eric had a life insurance policy during the marriage or currently has one, that's going to be certainly a factor. The prevailing interest rates at the time of the order. And finally, the other obligations of Eric. And so what we're going to get into is whether or not Eric currently has, for example, life insurance and whether that's whole or term life insurance. And really, it's going to be on a case by case scenario. So if Eric has, for example, a three year uh, maintenance uh, award, that's going to be drastically uh, different. The court may not even award security in that circumstance. If uh, Eric is in good health and he's 40 years old, the court's going to take into consideration the unlikelihood of him dying and the cost and the mechanics of him obtaining his own separate life insurance award, as opposed to Eric is 50 years old and he's got some health issues and there's a 10 year maintenance award. Now, those health issues that Eric has that might go into the insurability of Eric to obtain a life insurance policy in the first place. And again, if he already has a life insurance policy, then the court could order that he provide that Melanie is the beneficiary of that. And we're going to get into how much he's paying and the ex extent or the length of that duration. So one common term is he, you take a net present value of his future payments, and then you reduce it by, for example, 70%. And so that if he's got a, if we determine that his future maintenance exposure or award is a million dollars, then he would need to make sure that Melanie is provided for up to $700,000 or rather at least $700,000 as a beneficiary of an existing life insurance policy. Now we can get into some really detailed analysis on this. But really, the point is that Eric likely is going to be naming Melanie as a beneficiary under his life insurance policy. Eric oftentimes will come to me and ask why he needs to do that. And the easy answer is that Melanie is going to be dependent in the future on Eric and needs to make sure that her needs and the rationale that went into the spousal support award in the first place are met. But for now, that gives you a high level understanding of securing life insurance 
or securing maintenance payments in the future with life insurance or some other financial consideration. And thanks for joining us on Divorce at Altitude.